Now on we go to consider the words of the Bible. Christians have a hard time grasping the idea that Jesus Christ was only a human prophet, sent by God to deliver his message to the lost sheep of the children of Israel, who were in desperate need of guidance. If Jesus Christ were God, or the Son of God, many verses in the Bible would state as much, or quote his statement to the fact, telling people to worship him. Through a careful study of the Bible, one would discover that no single, unequivocal statement is found anywhere in the scripture claiming that Jesus Christ is God, or quotes him saying, Worship me. Nor is there a mention of God or Jesus Christ being part of a trinity. Jesus Christ never claimed to be the Son of God, let alone claimed to be God himself. He is not the Son of God in the sense that he was the begotten Son of God. Instead, he is metaphorically the Son of God in the sense that all righteous people are children of God. Thus, this title is not to be taken literally, as many Christians have done in error. Many verses in the Bible clearly illustrate that God in the heavens and Jesus Christ are two separate beings. The concepts of Jesus Christ as divine and part of a trinity did not become part of Christian doctrine until centuries later, after the departure of Jesus Christ. The word trinity is not mentioned anywhere in the Bible. In John chapter 14, verse 28, Jesus Christ states, You heard me say, I am going away, and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. In this verse, Jesus Christ distances himself from God and does not portray himself as part of a trinity. This verse explicitly tells us that Jesus Christ was at one place and God, the Father, was at another. Jesus Christ had to travel to reach God the Father, proving that both beings are separate entities. Many verses in the Bible demonstrate that God, the Almighty, and Jesus Christ are two different entities. Luke chapter 6 verse 12 also demonstrates Jesus Christ's dependence on God. It shows Jesus Christ, the human prophet of God, going to the mountainside to pray all night to God in the heavens. Matthew chapter 26 verse 39 states that when Jesus Christ realized they would crucify him, he walked out of Jerusalem to a garden with his disciples, telling them that he needed to step aside. He fell on his face in prostration, just like Muslims do, and prayed to God in the heavens. He did not want to be crucified, since he feared that the people he was sent to save would not believe in him and his message. Going a little farther, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus Christ sought aid from above, from God the Almighty, when he feared being crucified on the cross. He begged the one and only Almighty, the all-powerful, the one that aids and does not require anyone's help. Acts chapter 2 verse 32 states, God has raised this Jesus. Matthew chapter 27 verse 46 quotes Jesus Christ crying out and begging to his Lord, And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If one forsakes another being, this act implies that both are separate beings and not one. John chapter 14 verse 28 states, For the Father is greater than I. Since one is greater than the other, they have to be separate entities. John chapter 17 verse 3 states, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Yet another verse proves that each entity is a separate, distant entity. 
This verse says that to attain eternal life in paradise, one must believe in the one true God, to whom Jesus Christ was praying. Christians believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. However, this verse dictates that they must believe in the Father alone, the one true God. Again, in John chapter 12, verse 27, it demonstrates the act of Jesus Christ begging God to save him. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour.